All right, this is uh, Bob, the Sacred Cow Tipper, uh, video number seven of debunking the August 21st, 2017, the Great American Eclipse nonsense. All right, video number seven. Uh, I hope the last video you took serious, uh, my call to you to repent and believe on Christ. Okay, but I, I said at the beginning, uh, video one or two, that I was going to get back to the eclipse stuff and the blood moon tetrads, okay? Uh, and this is it. This is my final thoughts on it. Okay, on NASA's website, just in the year 2001 alone, we had two solar eclipses and three lunar eclipses. That is five in one year. Are we supposed to put our faith in these things and on these things. I'll give the dates to you. January 9th, 2001, we had a total lunar eclipse. June 21st, 2001, we had a total solar eclipse. June, July 5th, 2001, we had a partial lunar eclipse. December 14th, 2001, we had an angular solar eclipse. And December 30th, 2001, we had a penumbral lunar eclipse. Okay, so if we're going to put our faith in every time an eclipse, whether lunar or solar, comes around or things like that, uh, we got to see what the Word of God says about these things, all right? So is God's Word not enough for us? I've said that a million times on this video series. Uh, I hope you get back to reading your Bible prayerfully and learn how to read in context. It's not difficult at all. I actually have a, a teaching called the Cosmos Analogy. Uh, if <laughs> you want to learn to read in context without having to learn all the hermeneutics and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so if you want to base something off the sun, moon, stars, the galaxy, whatever, this is what you do. You read the verse. The verse equals the earth. Okay, and from there you read the whole passage that verse is in. And that passage could be a handful of verses to three, four, five chapters long. Okay, that equals the solar system. Okay, then you read uh, that passage uh, in light of the book that it's written in. Okay, the book equals the galaxy or the Milky Way. All right, and then you read all scripture combined, all 66 canonized books would be the universe. That would equal the universe. Now, if you read scripture in light of that, uh, that's when uh, I really started seeing a whole bunch of error uh, in the teachings I've learned over the years. It's something God showed me uh, about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And I really had to repent from a lot of false doctrine as I was quoting a whole bunch of scripture out of context. Okay, so anyhow, I hope you try that, try it in something as you prayerfully and study to show yourself approved. Okay, if you're not willing to study to show yourself approved, you should not be teaching, you should not be pastoring, you should not be evangelizing. If you're not willing to put your whole heart into it, if God has called you, you need to, you need to ask him to give you the desire to do that. You're not ready to be in ministry yet. Okay, let's go to Matthew, um, let's see here. Okay, so I gave you all the eclipses that we had in the year 2001 alone. Okay, we can't put our faith in this stuff. Uh, they are very unreliable. But God does give us signs in the scriptures that have to do with the sun, moon, stars, and all that. Okay, I'm going to give you some of that right here. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, now these are the signs God gave us, not these unreliable signs that people are given on the Internet. Okay? Oop, oh, was I wrong? Jesus did mention something about the sun and moon here. Wait a second. He also mentioned the stars falling and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 
Steve didn't mention these in his video, now did he? Now, this isn't to pick on Steve alone. There's Right now there's dozens of videos on this and probably dozens of prophecies that have come out on, I'm not even going to mention the websites. I know some people that go to certain prophetic websites and I've read some of their prophecies. Uh, very unscriptural. Uh, the ones I've read so far, almost all of them, uh, have not come anywhere near coming to pass. And I've looked at some back in 2005, 6, and 7. One man said Obama was God's man. Really? Uh, Hillary Clinton was going to be saved. Really? Uh, just go go on that website. Some of you go to that website. Uh, just put it in the search box. And you'll find out that there was many, 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 many false prophecies given by that particular person. 95 to 99%. But signs and wonders happen at this person's meetings, so therefore everybody gives grace that the Bible does not say to give grace for. The Bible says in the last days, uh, Matthew 24, 4, verse 4, 5, 11, 23 to 25, there would be many people that come in Christ's name who would give false teaching, false prophecies. They would lead many astray. So you either take that serious or not. Okay? Okay, so I'm not just picking on Steve here. Steve didn't mention uh, the uh, stars falling and the powers of the heavens being shaken. Okay, It would have thrown a wrench into his poor exegesis, and it really shows that his interpretive skills of Scripture are what I call, and I heard this other preacher call it, a hermeneutical holocaust. I mean... I mean, this, this stuff gets me mad. I'm not saying these people are purposely trying to deceive anybody. I don't believe most of them are. I believe they just think God is showing them these things, even though every single time, these things, nothing happens. And when are we going to learn? And when are people going to quit doing this and actually uh, repent of this and get humble and admit that they were wrong? They never admit they're wrong. And that upsets me. If I say something wrong or do something wrong, somebody calls me out and I look into it, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i do a video. I'll tell you, hey, I missed it on this. Okay? That's part of being humble. If you're so full of pride you can't admit your, that some of your teachings are wrong and you've given words that you claim were from God and they were totally off and you were just maybe visualizing or uh, that's a practice that some of these prophetic people do and it's very uh, it's a form of occultism okay God never misses it one time and we need to start get back to that God never lies to us all right so if somebody says thus saith the Lord and it doesn't happen God didn't lie I mean you better watch who you're listening to all right, so let's go on. If you don't take every single word, verse, uh, passage, book into consideration when you interpret Scripture, you're on dangerous ground. Okay, and a lot of these teachers are just making stuff up and they're selling books. I could get into Zondervan, Nelson Publishers. Uh, they prepay some of these preachers that keep teaching the same garbage millions of dollars before they even write their book okay that's why a lot of good authors out there never get published they have a certain number that they publish every year they know they're going to sell millions because people are gullible and uh, that's all i'm going to say look and see who's being published there you go that's what actually goes on in the publishing world it's it's sad good authors have to self-publish themselves that's pretty sad Okay, uh, so we really need to quit being lazy. Let's read our Bibles. Let's believe it. All right. So what about the powers of the heavens shall be shaken? Not in the video, was it? Jesus told us how he was going to return as the lightning goes from the east to the west. You talk about fireworks. You talk about darkness. You talk about ominous things that are going to happen all at the same time. These are supernatural signs that Christ gave us. And he was very detailed on how he was going to return. Probably because there's going to be some fakery 
maybe 3D hologram stuff. The technology is there now for it. They got satellites everywhere. They could fake stuff now and make you believe Christ returned. Jesus told us how he was going to return, all right? So you need to read that and uh, take it serious. Okay, Christ's return is no always occurring blood moon or some really always occurring eclipse. Okay, it's going to be without people are going to be hiding themselves in the rocks and the caves like the Bible says when they see Christ return. Okay. <clears throat> Also notice the stars shall fall from heaven. Sounds pretty supernatural to me. That That's going to be God Almighty doing... I don't understand that. But the Bible has always been proven right. So whether God undoes the universe or if it's something else that's so amazing, something uh, Satan can't do for sure, uh, then we know it's God, right? Okay, um, so the stars shall fall from heaven. Who were these signs given to? This is a whole nother subject, but who were these signs given to? They were given to believers, followers of Christ. So, and this verse is after the tribulation. So if none of us are here in some pre-trib rapture, then why did Jesus give his followers these signs? Unbelievers don't read the Bible. Most of you Christians don't read the Bible. You think unbelievers are going to read this? Okay, anyhow, that's a whole other subject. I'm going to do a whole series of videos on that. Not that other people haven't done it, but uh, these signs were given to believers way back in Matthew 24, way back in Revelation, okay? And I believe also in Joel. Uh, so... I know, you got that one verse about the time of Jacob's trouble, and God's going to have some wedding feast without the people who get saved during the tribulation. Uh, there's some major flaws. Uh, I just, uh, I don't know, but I don't see how we could be alive and remain and be raptured and gone. Paul told us when the rapture is going to be. That's a whole other subject, but anyhow, you either believe the scriptures or not, I do a really good exegete of uh, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, and Paul tells us exactly when, but I'm really getting off here, but it kind of coincides uh, with this section of scripture here. Okay. Okay, uh, did you know that I filmed a blood moon a month, or, a month before or after the actual uh, regular blood moon that happened in the last Tetrad? where me and my wife live, uh, I filmed it. The, there was all kinds of conditions that made the moon really red, redder than when the blood moon happened. Now, should have I put some significance on that? Uh, Paul, Paul warned about these things, that people would put significance on days, feasts, Sabbaths. Paul warned about this stuff. People put too much into this, all right? I don't remember where that verse is at, but Paul actually talks about that. Okay, so here I filmed a, a blood moon that wasn't, it was somewhere between a month before or after the real blood moon. Okay, so you could have blood moons not even on uh, on a tetrad. So, All right, let's go on here. Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Okay. Okay, I say God's signs will be so supernatural that no one on this planet will be able to deny it and have an excuse to not get right with God. But we have a more what? Okay, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. This is what Peter says. If you want to put emphasis on unreliable things, listen to what the Word of God says here. We have also a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto ye do well, do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy, Peter's talking about the prophecies that were already written in Scripture, and the prophecies that Jesus gave while on earth. 
that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. How come these people always have a private interpretation that nobody else has? You tell me. There's something wrong with that. Someone who thinks they have a new revelation is claiming they have a private interpretation that no one else really has. You can't go wrong if you stick with the Word of God, and we need to stick with the Word of God. And the Word of God says no private interpretations. None of this, this means this to you, but means this to me, postmodernistic garbage that has crept into the church. Okay, this has beguiled many babes in Christ who think they have the meat of the Word of God, and I question if they've ever had the milk of the Word of God, because they have a lot of bad doctrine. Okay, and the Bible says to be babes in Christ, desire the sincere milk of the Word of God. You need to get your... Uh, essential doctrines of salvation you need to get that right first okay you're not even a babe in christ yet if you ain't got don't don't know that kind of stuff all right okay now the tetrad debunker brothers i was speaking of earlier okay i'm going to name them right here i think i named them in an earlier video we will get back to you in a second on the last video video number eight it's going to be a real short video Thank you.